This is a video response to Jeffrey Sparron's near aneurysm tirade against not only the video game Minecraft, but all video games in general. If you have not seen the video that this is in response to, please do, for, do so before watching this. The link is in the description box below. I would also like to plug a disclaimer that this video is a combination of researched fact, where it could be researched, and an educated personal opinion being a video game player myself. Without further ado, let's begin. In Jeffrey Sparrow's opening statements, he states that Minecraft doesn't make sense and lists the reasons that it just doesn't make sense in general. It promotes animal abuse, promotes rape, promotes sexually abusing children, and is, in general, a disgrace to America. Might I open by stating that rather than promoting animal abuse, one could view Minecraft as an interesting learning tool in the arts of survival in the wilderness. If you are going to attack Minecraft, you would also need to attack 75% of the shows on the Discovery Channel and America itself for butchering those innocent animals for your consumption. As the early 20th century playwright Tennessee Williams stated, the only thing worse than a liar is a liar that is also a hypocrite. Minecraft also demonstrates, in lieu of its official release and most recent updates, the ability to bring to life and raise new animals. If the player chooses to let the animals roam freely in the wilderness, this would be the polar opposite of abuse, as abuse, as defined by Merriam-Webster, is either a corrupt practice or the improper treatment of something. If you are granting life, how can you be mistreating it? How can you be corrupt when you are the giver of life? Secondly, there are no references to any form of rape in Minecraft, as the single-player mode only demonstrates you and the wilderness around you. On occasion, you will run into a populated village in which there are roughly half a dozen people, but there are no means of performing any sexual acts in Minecraft. As for the multiplayer, there are still no means of performing any sexual acts of any kind. Therefore, there would be no means of rape as well. While we're on the same region of the forest, there are no children in Minecraft, and as I stated before, there are still no means of performing sexual acts of any kind in Minecraft, therefore there is no way to promote sexually abusing children. As for whether or not Minecraft is a disgrace to America, I get the feeling that this is stemmed from the fact that Minecraft is a very low resolution and apparently low quality video game that has no direction or storyline, with the exception of what the developer Marcus Person refers to as a storyline, which is, in fact, a very loosely placed chain of events that are triggered by in-game achievements. Allow me to present a thought, Jeffrey. The reason Minecraft is pixelated to an extent is because the game, by nature, uses a massive amount of computer memory. When you create a new world, it uses a method called procedural terrain generation to create a completely unique map according to a random MD5 string that is plugged in to the seed, unless a unique seed is declared by the user. According to the, the blog by the game's creator Marcus Person on March 9th of 2011, the procedural terrain generation creates and stores large chunks of the world in blocks of 16 by 16 by 128 Without going in too deep into the inner workings of the computer, for each block of terrain, the computer would need to use an extraordinary amount of memory. And then even more to generate and maintain other such things as water flow, randomly generated animals, time of day, the structures that you, the player builds, if, the night, if it's nighttime, the creatures, creation and maintenance of monsters, and the constant watch over the player's health and XP. So until, unless someone has a high-end computer, the 16x16 16 16 textures of all blocks is about all a standard computer can handle. However, for enthusiasts, they can download texture packs for free that have up to 16 times the resolution, making the game look and feel realistic with the exception of its ever-blocking nature. To further support that it is not a disgrace, Marcus Persson is a game developer of Swedish nationality, and need I remind you that Sweden is an American ally, not a terrorist group according to the Swedish America Green Alliance, or Saga, which, according to the website for the Swedish U.S. Embassy, is about to celebrate its two-year anniversary later this month. For Jeffrey's final argument in the opening statement, which is that Minecraft doesn't make sense, the reason it would not make sense to a casual or even a conventional video game player is because of its actual intent. Minecraft was originally designed to be an open sandbox game, from which the player had unlimited supplies and could build anything he could dream. The communication of this effort breaks down when the player has never heard of the term sandbox game before, or is moderately lacking in the creativity, to where they don't know what to build, at which point it usually turns into a field of giant penises. 
However, players can create wondrous and elaborate contraptions that are awesome, which means awe-inspiring, for those of you who don't know, and elaborate, making it one of the most artistically inclined video games ever created. Moving on to the next set of arguments from Jeffrey Sparron's tirade, we approach the heart of the matter. He continues to state a long slew of connotations that may or may not be taken as falsehoods, some of which include that video games are destroying the American youth, playing video games is not the American way, offering to do more homework in school should be the American way, freedom of speech is causing American youth to turn into nothing behind keyboards, and my favorite of this section, people who play video games are not right in the head. To broach the subject as tenderly as possible, there is no substantial evidence supporting the claim that video games are destroying the American youth. It has been stated for years, and before video games it was rock music. Before rock music, I'm sure it was jazz. Lawyers, television spokespersons, and scientists, and a slew of other people have tried for years to provide a logically and evidentially supported argument as to how video games are destroying the American youth, and none of them, as far as my research can gather, have succeeded. However, I will give the benefit of the doubt and play devil's advocate for a brief moment. According to a post on the popular video gaming website Destructoid.com from February 20th, 2009, Link is also included in the description for those who are interested. The death toll of proven video game related deaths was 26 people and 2 wounded, spread out over 12 incidents. Since then, I have seen a grand total of 4 more incidents, all resulting in 1 death each. However, I will throw Jeffrey a bone and say that the total number of deaths is around 50, which clearly is far beyond any conceivable number according to researched fact. Before getting rid of video games, we could just as easily get rid of religion, which Jeffrey seems to feel is so crucially important to the American society as, as, in 1978, 909 religious fanatics took part in the world-famous Drink the Kool-Aid mass suicide. This is only one event in religious history. You would argue that they were not Catholics or Christians, and that, whole, and that Catholics and Christians would never promote such a thing. Let's take a brief look into history and the Holy Crusades. Thousands of people were slaughtered simply for not being Catholic. The Salem Witch Trials, where 26 people and one dog were killed, accused of being a witch. And the real kicker is that it took the Christian Church well into the 1970s to deem all of the executed to not be witches. Wave the candle at your animal abuse and your religion as pure, ju pure and just arguments. While you feel that the American way may not be to play video games, I've got news for you. It's going to be, and very fast. According to a statistic released by TDG Research, or the Diffuse Group, or Diffusion Group, the number of households with next-generation video game consoles in 2012 is up to 190 million. Now, even assuming that everyone in the world lived in their own household, that would mean that roughly 61% of the American population at the time of this video is currently playing video games. It seems to me that if it be, once it becomes more than half, it becomes the majority, thus deeming it the American way. While homework is crucial and very important to the progress of American youth, it does not fall upon the child to throttle themselves 100% on their video game exposure. It takes a certain level of discipline from the parents to show the child what is right and what is wrong in all aspects of life. As for the freedom of speech matter, I don't believe you understand how hypocritical you are being by stating that it is ruining our youth. It is the duty of every human being to question authority, and I don't mean to the degree of anarchy. I mean to the degree of not being a sheep led to the slaughter. Every news station on television has their own agenda, for a lack of a better word, and they will pitch it until the networks force them off the air. It is a responsibility of the individual to go out and research what he or she hears on the news, or on the radio, or on the internet, and find the silver lining which always exists. And to state that video gamers are not right in the head it is to display bigotry and a lack of knowledge. Even as we speak, a new genre of video games called edutainment is being created and pumped into public schools in full force. Why, you ask? Because research has shown, time and time again, that video games are both mentally and dexterously stimulating. If it, wasn't, if it wasn't for the lack of educational content in the video games, this leap in education would have been taken years ago. However, it took someone in a stuffed suit with about a half a dozen degrees in psychology to convince school boards that if video games are created with educational content in mind, that they can become some of the most powerful and effective learning tools we've seen to date. If you don't... 
if you want to see what I'm talking about, take a gander at the adultlearn.com link that is in the description as well. If you don't know what take a gander at means, look it up in a dictionary. Stimulate yourself with some of that beautiful knowledge you insist so prudently. Scientists are not noticing that with the rise of video game popularity, the average IQ scores of American youth are actually increasing. So much to the fact that they estimate by 20, uh, 2100, the average IQ score will be 145. Keep in mind that Stephen Hawking, the designer of black hole theory, and many other accomplishments, has an IQ of roughly 160. The final argument I would like to approach, which has not been accidentally approached in other arguments, is the argument that Jeffrey makes stating that video games are preventing our country from fighting terrorists. I find this interesting, seeing as according to a 2005 issue of Wired magazine, they covered how all of our military vehicles will be remotely controlled, even down to our tanks, by 2050 or so. When we're training fighter pilot pilots for jets and chopper pilots, before we trust them with the, behind the stick of a $7.03 million helicopter or behind the stick of a $140 million jet, we have them fly highly accurate and realistic video game simulations. Our military's unmanned aerial re reconnaissance vehicles, or more commonly referred to as UAVs, are controlled by consoles that are almost exactly like flight simulation video games. So if anything, video games are saving lives. In summary, I believe that Jeffrey Sparron's near aneurysm tirade was just that, a near aneurysm tirade, with no factual basis behind it. I fail to see how he represents, as he puts it, the authority of America, and as it appears, he hasn't even hit puberty yet. As for Minecraft and video games in general, as research would show, the only s they only stand to have a brighter future, and whether or not you like it is inevitable. So, posting videos like this and then expecting not to get flamed by the entire internet community is a little foolhardy and a little short-sighted. If you want to earn people's respect, support your arguments with fact instead of just stating that you are the authority and what you say is fact, no matter how fallacious or malicious it is to over half the United States. That's it for me. The ball's in your court, Jeffrey.